what is your personal religion? Like, is there a purpose, given that we're just sitting on this speck in the middle of this sea of stars? Now, I don't want to duck any questions. <laughs> and I'm not going to duck this one. But let me ask you, what do you mean when you use the word God? He's not here. He went somewhere else. He had other things to do. So what do we actually mean when we say God? If that single word can point to wildly different ideas, an all-seeing father figure, the laws of physics, or a silent first cause, then maybe the first honest step isn't belief or disbelief. Maybe it's definition. Before we can argue, we have to agree what we're arguing about. My question is, given all these demotions, what is your personal religion? Or do you, is there any type of God to you? Like, is there a purpose, given that we're just sitting on this speck in the middle of this sea of stars? No, I don't want to duck any questions. <laughs> and I'm not going to duck this one even though I have uh, high religious personages who are close friends of mine in this room. Um, but let me ask you, what do you mean when you use the word God? If a word can smuggle in a thousand meanings, it can also blur a thousand disagreements. That's why this conversation matters. Are we picturing a person who intervenes, a mind with intentions, or are we talking about the orderliness of nature itself? because those aren't just different gods, they're different worlds. Quick thought for you watching right now, when you hear God, what definition pops up first? Personal, cosmic order, or something else? Drop your take in the comments and I'll respond to the most interesting ones. Here's Sagan's uncomfortable but liberating pivot. Maybe we should stop outsourcing our survival to the sky and start taking responsibility down here. If no one is guaranteed to save us from ourselves, then what we choose today matters. Which to my mind is much more responsible than hoping that someone will save us from ourselves so we don't have to make our best efforts to do it ourselves. And yet he's not shutting the door. He even flips Pascal's wager on its head. Act as if no one's coming. Do the work, build the safeguards, and if a higher power steps in, great. But banking on rescue is not a plan. It's a risk. And if we're wrong, and there is someone who steps in and says this, okay, that's all right. <laughs> I'm for that, but we, you know, hedged our bets. It's Pascal's bargain run backwards. So what sits under the word God? Sagan lays out a spectrum. On one end, the anthropomorphic ruler, the bearded sky king who tallies every sparrow. On the other end, Einstein slash Spinoza's God the sum of the lawful structure of reality. Not a person, not a will, but the reason the universe is intelligible at all. Denying that lawful order would be absurd. Calling that God is a choice of vocabulary. The word God covers an enormous range of different ideas. And you recognize that in the yes. way you phrase the question. <laughs> Running from an outsized, light-skinned, male, with a long white beard sitting in a throne in the sky and tallying the fall of every sparrow, for which there is no evidence. To my mind, if anybody has some, I sure would like to see it. Um, <clears throat> to uh, the kind of God that Einstein or Spinoza talked about, which is very close to the sum total of the laws of the universe. Now, it would be crazy to deny that there are laws in the universe. And if that's what you want to call God, then of course God exists. There's more. The deist clockmaker creates, then retires. If that's your definition, prayer won't move him. Policy and physics will. These aren't hair-splitting semantics. They change how we behave, what we hope for, and what we build. And there are all sorts of other nuances. There is, for example, the deist God that many of the founding fathers of this country believed in, although it is a secret whose name may not be spoken in some circles, a, uh, a roi fainéant, a do-nothing king, the god who creates the universe and then retires, and to whom <clears throat> praying to is sort of pointless. He's not here. He went somewhere else. He had other things to do.
Now the razor's edge. If I answer, do you believe in God, with a simple yes or no, you learn almost nothing, until we define the term. Vague language lubricates social life, Sagan says, but it doesn't help us find truth. Precision is not pedantry, it's honesty. When you say, do you believe in God, if I, I say yes or if I say no, you have learned absolutely nothing. I guess I'm asking you to define yours if you have one. But why would we use a word so ambiguous that means so many different things? It gives you freedom to what? define it. It you gives choose. you freedom to <clears throat> seem to agree with someone else with whom you do not agree. It covers over differences. It makes for social lubrication but it is not an aid to truth, in my view. And therefore, I think we need much sharper language when we ask these questions. Sorry to take so long in answering this, but this is an important issue. Pause and consider the stakes. If God means the lawful fabric of the cosmos, then science is our scripture of reality. Experiment, error correction, prediction, if God means a personal agent who intervenes, then evidence of consistent, targeted intervention should be observable, or we should adjust expectations about how and when intervention happens. Either way, the path forward is the same. We ask better questions and demand clearer definitions. Which definition do you find most compelling, and why? Personal deity, deist creator, or Spinoza's cosmic order? Tell me in the comments and challenge someone else's view respectfully. Let's make that thread worth reading. Here's a practical test Sagan implies. Does your definition change what you do tomorrow? If your answer doesn't alter your responsibilities to each other, to the planet, to truth, then maybe you've defined comfort, not a compass. Remember, we live on a pale speck, but we are not powerless. Our tools are humble, curiosity, falsifiable claims, ethics grounded in consequences, compassion justified by shared vulnerability. If there's a higher purpose, perhaps it's this, consciousness waking up to its duties in a universe that doesn't play favorites. And notice how that stance keeps wonder intact. You don't have to shrink the cosmos to make room for meaning. Meaning may be the courage to face the cosmos as it is, and still do right by each other. What's one concrete responsibility you think humanity is dodging because we quietly hope someone else will fix it? Add it below, I'll feature a few in the next video. Before we close, let's thread the needle the way Sagan does. Skepticism with humility. Be rigorous with claims. Be gentle with people. Keep language sharp and hearts open. If there's a transcendent order, our best shot at meeting it is by understanding the universe it authored, or the universe it is.